Hey guys, welcome to a brand new update video. Today we will be uh, discussing the changes made in the new snapshot version 19w34a and that will really be covering the changes made in the past two weeks even though there wasn't really as much content uh, added in the first week as compared to the second week we will still be discussing both of those. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the first big thing that we're going to talk about is the option settings. So option settings are going to be able to be set now and properly parsed and load correctly. It's using the same file format as Minecraft Java Edition and it stores all of the settings and everything the same. So what this means now is that we can have settings that you can go in ahead and change. Like if we go back into languages, uh, we can go select a language. Let's go down somewhere here to German. Let's select German. And then we're going to go hit done or fertig. And then, so once we hit done, what happens is that it's saved to the options.txt file. First time you load the game as well, you create the options.txt file with all the default options preloaded into that file. And then as you make changes, of course it gets saved. So when we hit done on the languages screen, it's going to go ahead and save it. And now that we've saved it, we can go ahead and just quit the game. So now that we've quit the game, we're going to reload it again, and you'll see what happens is that it loads. It loads in German. Uh, so now we know that everything will be saving properly. So let's go ahead and just set it back to English for now. And then we're going to hit done and go back to the main menu. So the next big thing we're going to cover is changes and updates to the options and settings menu. So if we go into the options menu, you're going to be able to see we've added a few new things. So we have the FOV slider, which is using the design of you hit left um, on your D-pad to move it to the left and right to move it to the right, obviously. And it's now possible to do this because every single time you hit done on the options screen, it saves every single change option that you changed inside of the uh, entire options menu. So you now have the ability to change your FOV. You have the ability to turn on and off realms notifications. Not sure if I'm actually going to have realms notifications as a feature in the game. We'll see. It really depends on how the realms API is to work with. So let's look in some of the new screens that we have. First screen that we can go into, obviously right here, is skin, skin customization. So when you go into the skin customization screen, you'll be able to change the different parts of the model that will be drawing in the game. So for example, your hat, um, different parts of the clothing, stuff like that. And that's not just the base skin, that's the things that show up in the layers. So like, you know how you have like one layer of skin that's just actually the skin and then the layer around it, the de decoration you'll be able to successfully change what parts of the model are displayed. You will also be able to change whether or not you are left-handed or right-handed, which will change the location of the hand on your screen and the orientation in which it is facing based upon whether or not you are choosing to use your left or your right hand as your dominant hand. It doesn't really affect the game, it's just an aesthetic thing that you can just look at. So, the next thing, if we go back out, we can go into the music and sounds options. Now the music and sound options, here you have your master volume, you got all the different settings for all the different things that you got in there, and you also got show subtitles. So you'll be able to change these. So the different uh, values here will not affect what happens in the menus, or in the menu screen, as that's not part of the actual game client. But once you're actually in the game, whether or not that's going to be multiplayer or if that's going to be single player, uh, you will actually be able to feel and hear the different effects. Another thing to note here is subtitles, uh, which is the thing that pops up in the bottom right corner of your screen if you have it on. It will show you what sound is playing and what direction it's playing in, uh, so that way you can have like awareness of where things are going on, even if you can't physically hear it, like you're deaf or something like that, and you're reading this through uh, captioning, or whether or not you just literally can't hear at the time, like you're on some busy bus or plane or something and you don't have enough volume to be able to actually hear what's going on in the game. So instead you can use this and you'll be able to see what is going on on your screen. Okay, if we exit out of this, we can now go down here to the video settings. And not all of these options are changeable. I'm going to note that 
just to begin with because some things really don't make sense to be changed. Like the max FPS. The maximum frames per second that you can have on the PSP is going to be exactly 60 frames per second because your, your uh, screen is only capable of 60 frames per second. Other things like full screen, you're not going to be able to change that really because there is no windowing system or anything like that. The game is always considered full screen, so there's no point to change that. Another option that you cannot change is mip mapping because it doesn't really provide much of a performance impact onto your game. It's more or less a RAM utilization uh, type of thing. And I think we can optimize and work around that, whether or not we actually implement mip maps. Another few things that we won't be able to change is being able to change VSync or VBOs. So VSync is basically when you're vertically syncing the rate, your frame rate, to match that of your monitor, even if it can draw faster. On the PSP, you're not going to be able to draw faster, and besides the way, the way that you have to draw frames automatically, you have to wait for V-blanks, which is uh, basically the opportunities that you have for, from VSync to be able to draw to the screen. So there's no way to disable VSync, really. So even though it says it's off, it's still on. And then the other option that you won't be able to actually change in this is you're not going to be able to change using VBOs. Uh, vertex buffer objects are a feature of OpenGL, uh, and they do not exist in this current version. Yes, we can draw using index elements and using stuff like that, which will be useful, and we will use that in order to more efficiently use RAM and stuff, but we're not actually going to be able to uh, have VBOs in the same exact way as it would be considered on something like a PC. A few other things that you can't change include changing the GUI scaling. Uh, you can't really make it smaller. Like, you couldn't make it smaller. And making it bigger would make it look ridiculous. So I think we're just going to stay with this, the way that it displays on your screen. So most of these options, or at least half of them, are able to be changed. Stuff like fancy graphics, being able to render your clouds, changing your render distance. I think the maximum will the maximum render distance we're really going to be able to support here is going to be 8. I don't think that the game is going to be able to run at 60 FPS at 8 render distance, but, you know, you can hope, and everyone is entitled to the ability to hope that you can do that. Furthermore, you can change whether or not you have view bobbing, things like that. Uh, you can also change the amount of particles that will be used. That's probably going to be something important based on your frame rates and stuff like that. Uh, I believe particles will probably already be at a somewhat decreased state from the actual base game uh, just to save on frames and just in order to save on frames and stuff like that. There's no such thing as instancing, so we can't just draw a particle and then make copies of that in VRAM. We're, we don't have the ability to do that. And pretty much, if we exit out of that, those are the main features that we have for this week. This week is going to be the penultimate week for... Uh, this sort of changes, these sort of menu changes. So what that means is that next week there will be the last bit of changes, which is going to be like the controls, being able to change your controls into control schemes like that. You're also going to be able to do different things uh, with your chat, being able to do different things with resource packs, and then and then we'll try to emulate what the snooper does a little bit, just to be able to get you some of that debug information onto your screen. I don't think the snooper will actually work in the same way as the desktop snooper, where the desktop snooper can use the network in order to actually go ahead, connect, and give Microsoft or Mojang some information. We're not going to implement that. There's no point to do that, and I don't think it's worthwhile. Next week, we're going to be adding the multiplayer menus uh, in order to basically set up an uh, environment before we actually start implementing the client, imp implementing the MC lib stuff like that in order to be able to actually connect to servers and stuff like that. Uh, we'll be working mainly on the client side things, which is going to be how everything's drawn, how everything's rendered, graphics, stuff like that. And we'll be able to connect to tech servers and be able to handle inputs and stuff like that. We're not yet going to be able to do things offline yet, just for the ease of use and for the ease of understanding here, uh, because the server is really the heart of the game. and. Even if you're playing a single player, you're playing on an internal server. We have to get a client down before we can really have a server to back that up. If I make a server, so what? It's a bunch of data that you can't tell what's going on. Uh, it's more useful to have the client be implemented before the server. 
Okay, so a little bit more news. From version 0.3 and onwards, we are going to be doing strictly a multiplayer client uh, until obviously we have the majority of the client issues worked out compared to the server issues. So what that means is that we're going to be doing it so that you can only play on multiplayer servers for now. And being able to do that allows us to actually see, you know, see what does the game look like? How do we render things? How do we do stuff like that? And being able to implement a version where we can go ahead and play just like we would be any other player on a server. The reason we're going to do that is because the client is really the front-facing part of Minecraft. It's everything that has to do with drawing things to the screen. What does it look like? What does the world look like? How do things perform? That is the main thing that allows us to show the game, show the player, do things like that. That's an important part of the process because if we can get an optimized, quick and efficient client, then we'll be able to implement our own server-side model so that we will be able to play the game offline because the server is the big part that does all the computation everything like that whereas the client is what does all the gui the sound the rendering everything that you see everything that you hear and experience in the game whereas the server is really just doing the dirty work and allowing you to be able to play the game like normal so once we get that client worked out once we get all those rendering all those features stuff like that that we want to have in the game then we can go ahead and start working on the server because there's a lot more data specific things that we're going to be able to that we're going to have to be able to do. So I hope you understand uh, that I don't want to make it just a multiplayer only thing. Like not everyone's going to be able to connect their uh, PSP to their network because you know wireless standards have changed in the last I don't know 10 15 years. So for the people who want to play single player you can still play single player on version 0.2 and you can still have all those features. I might have a separate patch for 0.2 that does a few of the maintenance things that we really need to have in that version. Like for example, rem removing the uh, ambient head motion is probably one of the big ones. Stuff like that, small little patches here and there that will be added to the version 0.2. It's not gonna be the active front of development. It's really going to be this idea of getting the client down, but I still want to be able to support that because I understand that people still want to be able to play offline. I want to be able to hear your opinion, uh, regardless of whether or not you have a PSP or not, or are going to be able to actually connect to like a network or something, or you can configure your network to be able to uh, connect and stuff, because I don't want it to be just an online game only. I do want it to be an offline game as well. I'm just saying that right now, in developing it to be something more than what it is right now. It's going to have to go through some changes in an experimental state uh, where it's only really going to work on the PSP until we can actually get to work offline, stuff like that. So I just want to be able to support those people who want to play it single player and single player only. I want to be able to make you guys happy alongside everyone else who wants to be on networking and on the newer version of the game. I want to be able to still post support, still fix bugs, do things like that, add features maybe, maybe, depending on how much time I have and stuff like that. I would want to be able to help you out no matter what, uh, because I really don't want to lose anyone here. I really want to be able to keep both sides, but, and obviously that comes with some cost, until we can further just update everything to some potential new version sometime in a few months where we'll have that support of both being able to do the client side things and being able to do the server side things at the same time and being able to work things out like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really wanted everyone to stay to the end to be able to actually watch that update section and to be able to understand what's going on, what's going to happen in the future. I want to have that sort of dialogue with you guys and I really want to uh, just help out in the future. I want to make sure that everyone's okay and everything goes long because I don't want anyone to just feel like, oh, I'm not going to support you or I'm not going to work on anything that you're interested in. I'm going to work on this part instead. Uh, because even though it's true that I can work on whatever I want, I still want to have that community support and stuff like that. So please hit like if you liked it, dislike if you dislike it, and please do 
talk in the comment section about what you want to see happen in the future. I'm really interested in seeing what's going to actually happen, and I want to know what you guys think of it. So, so once again, thank you guys so much. I'll be continuing to work on this project, and I'll see you next week.